What's up everyone, happy Monday or whatever day you may be watching this in the future and welcome back to the RA Visuals YouTube channel. My name is Ricky and today we're gonna to be talking about an awesome microphone setup that I recently upgraded to. More specifically, I'm gonna be talking about the Rode Pod Mic, how it works and what you can expect from it as far as sound right out of the box and some potential upgrades and setting tweaks as well to make it sound just that much better. So let's get it out of the box and see if this $99 mic is worth the money. Your CD key has discounted codes for games and software that are a fraction of what you would pay if you purchased them from a retail store. More specifically, they have great prices with Windows 10 OEM and retail as well. If that's not enough, you can also use my promo code RAV20 to receive 20% off the already discounted price. Just type in the product you're looking for, add it to the cart, view your cart, head to the checkout, and then type in my promo code RAV20 and see the sweet savings appear. But wait, PayPal isn't working for you? You just need to scroll down to the bottom right, click this link right here, and make sure you use that promo code they give you at checkout, and PayPal should work like a charm. Check the links in the video description to learn more. All right, so that unboxing sequence was kind of a joke, yeah. Because literally all you get in the box is, well, the microphone. So yeah, just make sure you go ahead and also buy an XLR cable with it uh, because you actually don't get one in the box. So I'll have one linked down below for you guys. And now that we have the pod mic here out of the box, let's go over some tech specs and features of this little microphone right here. So the pod mic is a broadcast quality dynamic microphone that is made for podcasting and it is optimized for speech applications. So if you're looking for something to use for a podcast, like I said, your streams or even some voiceover work, the, uh, the pod mic right here might just be right up your alley. In fact, the mic that I'm using right now and what I normally use to record my talking head portions of my videos is actually the Rode Video Mic Pro. It's up here and I figured why not grab another mic from the same company or manufacturer and possibly find some kind of synergy between the two mics for my talking heads and my voiceover parts. And now I just want to quickly go over what I use this microphone for and the experience that I've had with it so far. So I purchased this mic a little over a month ago and it has been my go-to for uh, streaming voiceover work on my channel for my videos ever since. So if you've been tuning into my streams lately as well and have, and have enjoyed the way my mic sounds now, this guy right here is what I've been using. Same with my videos. I've been doing a lot more voiceover work if you guys have noticed since getting this mic and that is because I feel like I finally found something that captures the natural sound of my voice and gives it that more broadcast sound that I've been looking for. Now since I'm already holding it here, I want to talk about the weight of this little guy. So this thing is actually quite the chunky boy as it comes in at 937 grams or 2.1 pounds and as soon as you pull it out of the box you can definitely feel it. So I'll touch on this a little bit more when we talk about build quality. But anyway, the pod mic is a dynamic broadcast microphone with a frequency range of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz with an output impedance of 320 ohms. Moving on from that, let's talk about the build quality here. So the pod mic has an all metal construction and I seriously mean all metal as the only part that is made of ABS plastic are these little adjustment knobs on the side of the mic to help you move it up or down to get it into that optimal angle that you might want. Other than that, all I can say is that compared to other mics, it may look just a little small and stubby. So it may turn a couple people off maybe because it may not look as good on camera like in your stream or something like that. But to me, I honestly think it looks fine. And I find that just by adding a windscreen to the top of this and like pulling it up a little bit off the body of the mic, it kind of makes the mic look a little larger and helps with those plosive sounds too. And speaking of those plosive sounds, you may be wondering, do I need to actually buy a shock mount or even a pop filter for this microphone? So due to the design of this swing mount right here, the pod mic is actually not made to be attached to an external shock mount at all. 
but the pod mic's capsule is internally suspended and the swing mount is internally decoupled from the body. So it makes it so you don't actually even need to use a shock mount. And on the subject of the pop filter, the pod mic has a built-in pop filter, so you're actually not supposed to have to use one. But I say this a little bit of like an asterisk up top because you don't need one, but I personally bought this really cheap windscreen that is especially made for this microphone. I feel like it adds a little bit of protection, not only from plosive sounds, but also from moisture getting into the capsule of the microphone, which can then degrade it over time. Anyway, back to the pod mic itself. Let's talk about how I use this mic for my videos and my streams and what settings I use in these situations. This mic has an XLR output, so you will need some sort of interface to use in conjunction with this microphone to get it working. So now when I said it's a $99 mic, that was sort of true, but also not true because you can't use it unless you buy an interface with it. Although getting an XLR interface to use with this guy is not really that expensive, and I've been using the Focusrite Scarlett Solo to bridge my pod mic to my PC. And now this interface is perfect for running a single XLR device on your computer, and you can get one on Amazon right now for around $120. Now they actually state in the features of this mic that it's designed to be used with Rode's own interface, the Rodecaster Pro, which would be a great idea, especially if you're looking to set up a full podcast type situation with like, you know, multiple of these mics. But unfortunately, this will greatly increase your budget as the Rodecaster Pro comes in at almost $600. But again, if you're putting together a podcast with multiple of these guys, and that's, if that's what you're looking to do, um, this plus a couple of pod mics is an incredible value compared to the usual Shure SM7B setup, which is just $400 for one microphone. Ouch. I personally only use this one mic for what I do, so let's go over my personal setup for streaming and voiceover work. I have the pod mic here attached to my arm from InnoGear that I did a video on just a little bit ago, and pretty much all you have to do here is just screw the mic's mount into the mic arm and twist until it's towards your mouth. Of course, Rode actually does make a mic arm themselves that they suggest using with this called the PSA-1, but my arm that I have holds it just fine and it's actually a bit cheaper, so I'll list both the options in the description for you guys. Anyway, Anyway, after getting the mic on the mic arm, you need to just go ahead and plug in the female end of an XLR cable to the back of the pod mic and then plug the male end into the recording interface that you're using. After that, you just need to make sure that your interface is plugged into your computer and that's it, you are good to go. All right guys, so now we are on the computer with the pod mic right here and we're using this just connected over here to my Focusrite Scarlett Solo. You can see the waveforms are popping up right here. And now in this configuration, I wanna point out right away, I have to bump up the volume like all the way, cranked almost all the way to the top. I try to test it as best possible to see that I wasn't clipping. Uh, when I'm kind of talk, I'm, I have a loud voice. When I talk a little bit louder, it may show a little bit. When it turns yellow, it, it shows that you're clipping a little bit, but hopefully I don't do that. Um, so the reason I really have to bump it up is because pretty much this mic gets very quiet unless you really turn it up. And unfortunately, this ended up introducing a lot of the feedback and that background noise, which is very common when you simply just crank up something and you have nothing else in this to uh, combat that background noise. So kind of just take a listen real quick to what it sounds like, even when I just get really quiet and don't say anything. So again, I'm not sure if you guys can even notice that, but if you listen to it with headphones, you definitely can hear the feedback noise, and you might even be able to hear it uh, in the gain in my voice when I'm actually talking right now. And as I said before, this is a dynamic microphone, so I gotta talk really close to it, so that's why I'm doing this. We'll talk about that more later anyway. So what do I do to combat this background noise? I use one of these guys right here. So because I do not own the Rodecaster Pro, which would give me the ability basically to EQ the mic right into that little mixer and move the levels up and down, I bought this little mic activator is what they're called. And it's actually fully, the full name of this thing is called the Cloud Lifter CL1. You can see right there, mic activator. Um, so the Cloud Lifter basically goes between the pod mic you see right here and then the recording interface you can see back here. And it is like an in-between thing that basically gives you the ability to add gain to the pod mic without introducing a bunch of that weird feedback noise when you just basically take the knob right here and crank it all the way to 11. So basically this entire time I've been talking, you've been hearing the pod mic without the cloud lifter. So let's quickly switch over to using the cloud lifter with the pod mic. Okay guys, so now we have everything plugged in right here. We have the cloud lifter plugged right into the Scarlett Solo right here. And as you guys can see, I actually have the levels. It's not even set to 50%. And because of my voice being so loud as it is, I'm already kind of getting to the yellow. So I'm gonna turn it down even a little bit more as I'm talking here to 
try to find the sweet spot right there and there we go i think that's okay i may like clip a tiny bit if I'm, my voice gets really loud but hopefully this sounds good to you guys so Basically, here's what it sounds like with the cloud lifter now, and I will be using this for the rest of the video. And I want to quickly point out that, again, I didn't even have to turn the gain up past 50 with this. So that's what I was talking about, how this adds the gain already into the microphone without you having to take that knob and just crank it to 11 and add a bunch of that feedback into it. And then here's what that sounds like now when I stop talking. Okay, so hopefully you guys are able to hear what that sound floor sounds like, and honestly, it probably sounds pretty dead. It doesn't really do very much. So yeah, this is why I feel like it's almost a necessity to use this cloud lifter thing. Um, and if you've been searching around for this specific microphone right here, I'm sure you've seen people use this piece of tech over here, and uh, it, it actually allows you to increase the gain of this pod mic right here without introducing any of that harsh feedback, which you guys probably heard earlier, and all that background noise you normally get when you turn up the, the gain on the microphone. So essentially, you get all that gain, 25 decibels to be exact, and then no crappy background noise. So awesome so one more thing that i like to do with recordings when it comes to recording voiceover in premiere when i do my videos is i like to add a little bit of bass to the you know your low end of your voice so basically uh what i do when i do voiceovers in premiere is i kind of record the voiceover and then i just quickly add a little bass boost effect of plus 5 db when i do a recording so i'll give you guys an example right now so let's go ahead and hit the record button right here and then uh see what it does one second there we go we'll hit that and as soon as it goes I'll just keep talking like this. Hey, 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 testing, testing, one, two, three. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, whatever. Uh, we're testing the Rode pod mic, and this is what it sounds like without any of the bass boost, blah, blah, blah. So there we go. And then that's done, and then we can go ahead and listen to that back. I'll just keep talking like this. Hey, 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 testing, testing, one, two, three. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, whatever. Uh, we're testing the Rode pod mic, and this is what it sounds like without any of the bass boost, blah, blah, blah. So, th so there you go. That is what it sounds like basically without the bass boost. So what I do is I just go up to, uh, you guys probably can't see that. Let me move my face real quick. There we go. Put myself like right there so you guys can see. We'll go ahead and go to effects right here. All I do is I go to audio effects. I go to filter and EQ. Go to bass right there, drag that on top of that, uh, I'll just make that bigger so you guys can see it, uh, onto that sound sequence right there. And then once you do that, go to effect controls, you can see the bass boost is right there. And all I do is press 5, enter, bam, now we got a bass boost of 5, and I'll let you guys take a listen to what that sounds like afterwards. And actually what I normally do in Premiere as well is I actually make it a little bit louder too. I kind of usually push it up at least like... 5 db or something like that so i do like a volume level of 5 db as well and i find that this right here is almost perfect when i do my voiceover so take a listen to that i'll just keep talking like this hey 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 testing testing one two three peter piper picked a peck of pickled peppers whatever uh we're testing the Rode pod mic and this is what it sounds like without any of the bass boost blah 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 so there we go all right, guys, so you can see the waveforms, they never go past negative 6 dB, which is normally what you want. You want to be right around that area. Honestly, I could have been a bit louder even when I was talking, but uh, just depending on that, you can always just play with your levels. But I think the way that sounds as soon as I apply that bass boost to it, I think it sounds a lot better, and that's kind of what I was looking for. I also use this microphone for all of my streams through OBS, and because this mic is so great at blocking out unwanted noises, uh, all I have to do is basically add a compressor in OBS with a couple of settings. So let's go ahead and get into OBS. There we go. So now we're in OBS and I'll show you guys my settings that I use while I'm streaming. So I just basically go here, go to filters, and I got a couple of these things. Here, I'll move that out of the way so you can see my face still. But yeah, what I basically use is just this compressor right here. And if you go here, I basically just do the ratio, 3.00 to one right there, threshold minus 24 dB, attack three milliseconds, release 15 milliseconds, and output gain six dB. And what I find, guys, is this gives my voice the exact kind of bass boost and a little bit of, you know, just volume boost that I add in Premiere like I just showed you guys. And that's what I use when I'm streaming in OBS right here. And now that we have the mic set up, finally, the way that I like to use it and where I feel like it sounds exactly like it should, 
let's discuss the pickup pattern of the mic. So like I said before, this is a dynamic mic. So it basically only picks up what's right in front of it. And now if you see, if I move around the microphone and start talking over here, over here, over here behind it, stuff like that. If I move around this way, this way, this way, and start talking behind it, behind it this way, behind it this way. If I even move the mic around and start talking like this backwards, you guys will notice it's not gonna pick it up as much as it was before because if, even if I go away like this, or if it's even right in front of my face like this and I go all the way back, you can see quickly it starts to lose all that gain because it's meant to be talked into right in front of the capsule, which is right here. So when using this mic right here versus your typical like cardioid USB mic, like the Blue Yeti or something like that, you kind of have to learn some good mic talking practice and keep your head kind of like right around the mic right here as you always kind of need to be aware of where your mouth is when you're talking into it to get the best sound. All right, so just for fun, just so you guys can see how well it blocks stuff out in the background. Uh, it may still pick up some noise, but it normally blocks out quite a bit, especially when I'm gaming and there's there's game noise plus my keyboard and stuff like that. So here's like a quick, like, you know, worst case scenario test of what it sounds like when you're typing on your keyboard behind it. I'm just literally gonna mash a bunch of keys and then just let you guys hear it. So here you go. You guys would like never do this in a game, but yeah, this is what it sounds like. Really, you're gonna be hitting these four keys right here, WASD, and just doing this. Maybe the space bar or something like that. But yeah, that's on a more tactile keyboard. These are glorious panda switches that are in this keyboard, so it's a little bit louder than maybe, say like a linear key keyboard, but that's what it'll sound like. So if you have a really clicky keyboard, You'll always hear it on a microphone, but this thing actually does a pretty really awesome job of blocking stuff out like that because again, it's a dynamic microphone and it picks stuff up from the front. And speaking of sound, let's talk about some plosives of this mic right here. So now I mentioned before the pod mic comes with a built-in pop filter, but I still feel like it needs a little bit more coverage. So let's test that. As you see right now, I've had it on the entire time I've been talking because this is the way I prefer to use it. But let's go ahead and take this thing off right here. And so this is basically what it sounds like right here with the built-in pop filter, no windscreen right here. So let's go ahead and do a plosive test as we always do. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers, a pack of pickled peppers, Peter Piper picked. If Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers, where's the pack of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked? Okay, and now let's go ahead and throw the windscreen back on it again. Okay, and this is kind of where I usually set it right here. See, there's like a little ring right there. I usually set it right to where the, the the first ring is. And I feel like, A, that looks cool, and uh, B, it, it doesn't go right up against the top of the mic, and I think it works a little bit better right here. So let's see what this sounds like with the plosives. So Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. A peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, where is the peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked? So that's what it sounds like right, right there at the windscreen. And not only will this protect against the plosives, like I said before, it'll protect against the moisture coming out of your mouth. Sometimes you spit and stuff like that. And this will protect that moisture from getting into the capsule and possibly damaging the mic down the road. So in conclusion, you guys, I really think that the pod mic here is an amazing value for its $99 price tag. And after again, adding the cloud lifter and a bit of low end and post, I believe I found the exact sound that I've been searching for. And for the, and the best part about all this is I was able to achieve this sound for less money for the entire setup than the cost of one super high end microphone. That's pretty cool. And for people like me who are serious about their sound and wanna get like the best sound for the money, I think the pod mic is placed in the perfect price bracket and it's an easy choice. But as always guys, the choice is yours. So let me know what you guys thought of my setup and the way I actually set this mic up in the comments down below and let me know if you guys would have done anything different and if you guys actually came to this video and ended up learning something today and maybe you learned a couple new things that you want to take to your own setup be sure to hit my video with a like as it helps out that youtube algorithm a ton and if you guys want to see future microphone videos because i'm going to be doing quite a bit of those make sure you guys get subscribed with those notifications on that way you will not miss one of my future videos and they come out very soon but until the next one i'll see you guys later take care Thank you.